today's video, I'm going to be showing you a new toy that I just got in the mail that was sent to me, and it is an airbrush. And I'll put a link to this airbrush in the description box below. And I have been wanting one for about two years just because I've seen somebody use them a couple different times. They're kind of making a comeback. And I never bought one because previously when airbrushes were big, years ago, they was airbrush paint that was used. And I didn't want to buy a whole new thing of paint to deal with that. But recently people have been diluting gel polish to use in them. And I didn't know if it would work. And I didn't want to go through the whole process to find out it didn't work. But luckily it does work and it is so, so fast and so easy to do ombres. And I'm also going to show you how to add some details to some little hibiscus flowers in this video. I hope it's helpful. I hope it gives you guys some insight on whether or not an airbrush would be good for you. And if you're interested, like I said, there's a link to this one below. So check that out and I will see you guys next time. Bye. So here is the airbrush that I'm going to be using. It is off of Amazon and there comes with some instructions for it. This one is said to be used um, for makeup, for acrylic paint, for painting, for cakes, and for nails. So it's kind of a multi-use. If you are going to use it for something like nails, do not use it for a cake then. Don't put food in there. But you know, whatever purpose you are planning to use for it, same thing with like makeup, don't put gel polish in here and then try to put your foundation in. Bad idea. It's you know just one use, but whatever use you want to use for it, that is a that is an option. So it's got a little eyedropper if you want to pick up liquids that way. I probably am just going to pour straight from my bottle. And then it's got several different of the um, the liquid cups that go onto the top of the airbrush so that depending on how much liquid you're using, you can use a different sized cup. I'm going to use the second to smallest one. I feel like that's the best size for getting the gel polish mixed in, but you know, you have options. Options are good. It's got some cleaning tools, some little cleaning brushes, also really helpful. All of these little extra things are just so nice to have. There's instructions in the instruction manual I, um, as well that go through and as far as if you want to fully take the airbrush apart and do a deep clean on it, which is such a nice little bit of information just so that you don't hurt the airbrush and you know how to take it apart and safely put it back together. And a charging cord. So this is going to be a cordless airbrush, which is fantastic. I have a vendetta against corded things on my nail table because they get tangled up and it's a mess. So anything cordless I'm a big fan of and it's got a USB-C plug so you can just plug it in and then the other end is a USB stick it wherever I've got a USB charger on my nail table so I can just plug it in right there it only charges for about 15 minutes it is a super super fast charge and so then it's got a little cap to cover up the needle it's got the little cup on top if you want to plug or screw the airbrush handle right onto the air compressor you can otherwise you can use the hose I found it to be a little bit awkward to hold it with without the hose so here's how quiet it is so do you hear how quiet the air compressor is it's so quiet it's so quiet it's way quieter than say like my e-file or my dust collector it is it sounds loud in the video at least i feel like it sounds louder than it is i was so impressed with how quiet it is so i'm going to apply a coat of a light pink gel polish to the nail and then i'm going to dilute some darker pink with some acetone and this is the first time i've ever tried this so i'm kind of just figuring out as i go along i feel like i added too much acetone and there wasn't enough pigment so i'm going to add a little bit more gel polish really trying to find the balance between thinning out the gel polish to a liquid like a water liquid consistency and still getting enough pigment that it will it'll add a nice color when you go and put it in the airbrush so I put a piece of paper towel down on my nail table I'm going to pour that gel polish mix into the airbrush cup and then I'm going to practice on my paper towel like I said I've never used an airbrush for nails before I've used them um, for art and for cakes before I have a different cake airbrush but I've never used it for nails so I want to just do a little practice run I'm going to clean out the cup and I'm also going to clean out the airbrush as far as or the mixing cup the dappin dish and then clean out the airbrush I'm going to get as much of the gel out of it and then I'm going to switch colors. I'm not going to fully clean the airbrush right now because I'm going to use a secondary color. So after I finished airbrushing with the first color, I put that into my lamp and now I'm going to mix up a little bit more. So after I've mixed a little bit more of a darker color, more of a burgundy, and I've got it to where I think it's a good, a good texture, a little bit, you know, add a little bit of this, add a little bit of that. Once I'm happy, I'm going to pour that into the airbrush cup and then I'm going to close that back up. I love that they have caps. I think that's really helpful. Test it again and then go ahead and airbrush it. After I've airbrushed it with the second color, now I'm going to fully clean the airbrush. I'm going to squirt out as much of the airbrush color as I can, pour some acetone directly into the airbrush, and then I'm going to turn it on with my finger, gloved finger over the cap or over, over the needle and it, and it will push any little bits of pigment back up through the airbrush and out the cap and you can dump it out which is the quick, easy way to clean it. It really just took a couple minutes, so it wouldn't be that time consuming if you're working with a client to clean that out quick. 
I added a layer of gel top coat over my ombre nail and now I'm going to sculpt my hibiscus flowers. If you guys want like an in-depth video on cleaning the airbrush and airbrush maintenance, I can certainly make one of those. Please let me know. I, I've i used airbrushes like I said in the past and so I do have some experience with them. So if you'd like a more in-depth, um, go over all of the information video on airbrush maintenance and care, I can certainly make one of those. I wouldn't say I'm by any means an expert, but I do have some experience under, under my belt. So after we have our little petals, I'm gonna do two at a time to start with. I'm going to lay them over the top of a piece of a mold. So this mold actually is to make my half domes. So usually I use the other side of it, but this is the back of it. It's not pretty, but it is slightly rounded in shape. And I'm going to use that to give my petals just a little bit of a curve. So as I'm sculpting them out I'm adding some texture to the side that is up so the nail form backing you can see that you know the side of the petal that you're seeing is the side of the petal that I want to be visible at the end so I'm giving them a little bit of a texture with the tip of my brush but then the tricky part is at least in this circumstance the tricky part is when you go to pick them up you need to press the petal the textured side down onto your mold as long as your mold is the shape mine is if you're using something like a straw and the curve is going the other way then it would be different but for this you're going to want to have them laying so that the textured side is down so don't press too hard on them when you put them over there just kind of gently form them onto the top of it they don't all have to be the same shape in fact you want them to be a variety of shapes you want them to all just have a little bit of you know a little bit of a curve it does not have to match you're going to be sculpting five of these petals. And as you are sculpting them, just try to be cognizant of what size they are, how big the bead is, how you know how wide the petals are, how long the petals are, to try to get them to be close to the same. They do not have to be identical. In fact, as far as flowers go, one thing that's really nice about sculpting and painting flowers is that they do not have to be perfect by any means. They It almost looks better to me if they aren't perfect. If there's, you know, little little mishaps little differences little cracks or little little somethings because it looks so much more realistic flowers flowers aren't perfect and making you know trying to make them perfect and putting a big stress on getting everything exactly right i feel like is is unnecessary drama to your nail art life after i have the white one sculpted i'm going to sculpt one that is a pink color that is slightly smaller and then i'm going to sculpt another white a white hibiscus flower that is even smaller yet. I'm now going to take and I'm going to start gluing my petals together, overlapping them slightly. So I'm going to always overlap the same side. So as I go through, for me, it's going to be the right side of each petal. I'm going to glue the next petal on top of. So there's just a very slight overlap going around. Before you start gluing your petals together, I would highly recommend that you set them out. So have your table or whatever space you're working on and set the petals into the circle that you think they look the best. So like I said, all the petals are not going to be identical and some will fit better together than others. So as you are laying them out, just pre-plan where each one is going to go. And then after you glue them together, sometimes nail glue wants to wants to be difficult and doesn't want to actually stay together. You're going to flip your flower over just a little bit and put a little bit of clear acrylic underneath the petal that you just glued down. That'll hold it together so much better than just the glue on its own. And usually I would glue everything together and then add my acrylic underneath. But for this particular flower and this circumstance, because you're gluing such a tiny little bit together, the overlap is very small. It is too weak and I would be worried that you would get four petals glued on and then the whole thing would fall apart. So go through and add just that little touch of acrylic each time you attach a petal. Now the trickiest one is going to be the last one because like I said, I'm a, I am wanna sculpt them or glue them down so that they are overlapped the same way. That last one may or may not be possible to do it that way. So if it goes in a little bit differently, that is fine. Don't worry about it. But for the rest of them, try to glue them in that fashion. Now I'm going to take the airbrush with the lightest pink color or the brighter pink color, and I'm going to airbrush the very center of my flowers. As you're doing this, it does not take much, so take it slow. And then I'm going to use a darker color to airbrush the center of the pink flower. I'm going to let those cure, and while those are curing, I'm going to make their stamens. So with white acrylic for the white flowers, I'm going to sculpt the stamens. Again, keep in mind the size of the flowers as they were previously. Some of them are longer, or some of them should be longer, and some of them should be shorter. And then for the pink flower, I will be using the same pink color that I used for that flower. As you are sculpting these stamens, try to keep the side that is up that you're seeing nice and round. Don't try to pat it out really flat. You want to keep a little bit of height on it. Obviously, the back side of it is going to be flat, but we'll fix that. But as long as this side is, you know, nice and round and domed, then you won't have to add acrylic to both sides of your stamens later. You'll just have to add acrylic to the back side. 
So after you have that, I have my stamens flipped over. They are fully cured. They are hard. I'm going to press them onto some poster putty, onto a little nail holder, and I'm going to add that second coat of acrylic onto the back of each one. And you can tell that they're really flat. You can see how shiny they are from the nail form backing. You just want to make sure that you round it out. It doesn't have to be perfect. I love, I love keeping that in mind. It's something that I say to myself a lot as well as I'm working, especially in something like a flower. I'll say to you know, it doesn't have to be perfect. You know, take your time. It's fine. It doesn't have to be perfect. And it's one of those mantras that, especially if you're working on something, if you're somebody that just tends to, to tense up, it's a great thing to just remind yourself. I applied some jewelry gel to the end of each stamen and dipped them into some jewelry gel. And then I dipped them into some glitter. And now I'm going to dip the other end into jewelry gel and attach it to the center of the flower. Now that you have gel on the middle of your flowers with the gel paint that you airbrushed, then you're going to probably want to use more gel than acrylic, especially for attaching things down. Don't try to glue your stamen to the middle of the flower because the glue will not, will not stick to that airbrushed gel. So you want to make sure that you're using the gel paint or the, um, the jewelry gel to attach the stamens. After that's done though, you can use some more of your acrylic just to make the transition from flower to stamen a little more seamless. I'm going to scuff a couple spots onto the nail that were on the nail just to give them a little texture so that when I go to attach the flowers, they do grab a little easier. I'm going to start with the biggest one near the cuticle. And I have people ask me a lot, do you need to do that? Do you need to scuff the surface first? Do you need to etch it? And the answer is no, you don't. I do find though that it does make things just go on a little bit easier if you do decide to do that. It is by no means like a required step, but I feel like it just makes it stick a little bit quicker. And so if it's something where you know where everything is going to be going, you can do that. If you are questioning where you're going to be placing a flower, do not etch the surface all over the place, hoping that it's going to be in the right spot. Just attach the flower, move it around, see where it feels like it fits, and then it'll be fine. So we're going to just take a little bit more of the clear acrylic and apply that to the underside of the flowers to really attach them down to the nail and make sure that they are securely stuck. And once you're happy that everything is in place exactly where it should be, you can be done, or you can take it a step further and add a little bit of a highlight here and there to the petals if you think it's necessary. I didn't necessarily think it was a big deal on my white and lighter pink flowers, but on the darker pink one, I thought that the petals just needed a little bit more pizzazz on the very edges. So I diluted some white acrylic paint and I'm going to be using that just to brighten that up. And I also brightened up the stamen on that one just a tad. Now using some matte gel top coat, since we did airbrush with gel, we do have to use gel top coat over our flowers, but apply a very thin layer of that gel top coat over the flowers to make sure that the gel stickiness is gone. And that is it. This is how they turned out. I am so excited to use this airbrush more. I know I will be using it for sure on clients. I've already been telling people, I'm like, next time you get your nails done, when you're thinking about what you want, keep in mind that we can definitely use that airbrush. And here is a Melody Minutes. everybody if you are interested in that airbrush there is that link down below for you i hope that you guys had as much fun with this video as i had and i am so excited to use the airbrush more and i'll see you all next time bye